Hello, today I'm going to work through a set of questions that you might typically get in an A2 level physics exam on capacitance. First, let's work through the formulae that you're likely to need for questions on this subject. Firstly, where you've got capacitors in series, then the formula is that 1 over the C effective, the capacitance that's effective, is 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. And if capacitors are in parallel, then the effective capacitance is C1 plus C2 plus C3. And remember that that formulation is precisely the opposite for resistance, where if the resistors are in series, then you simply add them together. And if they're in parallel, then you use the 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 formulation. So for cap capacitors, it's the other way round. Then the definition of capacitance, C equals Q over V, it is the amount of charge stored per volt. Then we get to the energy stored in a capacitor, which is a half QV, the charge times the voltage. And if you use the formula above it, which tells you that C equals Q over V and substitute for half QV, you can get half CV squared or Q squared over T 2C, they're all the same thing. Where a capacitor is made up of parallel plates, which have an area A and a distance between them D, then the capacitance will equal epsilon times A, the area divided by D, the distance between them, where epsilon is what's called permittivity. And epsilon can also be written as epsilon R epsilon zero, or epsilon naught, where epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space, and epsilon R is the relative permittivity if you've got something like a dielectric in between the two parallel plates. You simply need to know what the relative permittivity is to free space. Then we've got um, the question of charging a capacitor. Um, if you have a capacitor in a circuit and you're charging it, then the amount of charge after a time t will equal q0, the uh, final charge, times e to the minus t over rc, where r is the resistance in the circuit and c is the value of the capacitor. And similarly, when uh, charging the capacitor, the potential across that capacitance um, or that capacitor, when you're charging, will equal V0, which is the total source voltage, minus V0 e to the minus t over RC. And when you're discharging, the potential across the capacitor will be V0, which is the maximum um, voltage, um, times e to the minus t over RC. Finally, the value of the permittivity of free space is usually given as 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. Question 1. Calculate the effective capacitance of three 500 microfarad capacitors when they are A in series and B in parallel. Well, let's do parallel first. Remember, parallel, you simply add up the values. So C effective if you've got three capacitors in parallel is you simply add up the values and they are 500 microfarads each. So you're simply going to have three lots of 500 microfarads and that's going to be 1500 microfarads. So that's very simple. If on the other hand you want to know what that would be if they are placed in series, then you've got that one over C effective is equal to one over 500 plus 1 over 500, plus 1 over 500, which of course is 3 over 500. And, that mean, and that's 1 over C effective, so C effective will equal 500 divided by 3, and that comes to approximately 166 microfarads. Question 2. When a potential difference of 3 volts is placed across a capacitor of 300 microfarads, what charge will it store? Well, here we'll need the equation that the value of the capacitor is equal to the charge stored per volt, which means that the charge, which is what we want to know, equals CV. The capacitor we, we were told was 300 
microfarads, so that's 300 times 10 to the minus 6 farads, times the voltage which we were told was 3 volts. So that's going to give you 900 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. So the total charge on that capacitor will be 900 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. Question 3. When a 400 microfarad capacitor is fully charged from a 9 volt supply, two questions. First, what is the total energy stored? Secondly, what is the total charge stored? Well, for this energy, we're going to need the formula that energy equals a half QV, which also equals a half CV squared, because we've been given the value of the capacitance and the voltage. And that means that the energy is going to be a half times the capacitance, which we were told was 400 microfarads. So that's 400 times 10 to the minus 6 times V squared. Well, it was a 9 volt um, battery, so V squared is going to be 81. And if you multiplied that out, you should find that the energy stored will be 16.2 times 10 to the minus 3 joules. Second part of the question, what is the total charge stored? For this, we will need the formula that C equals Q over V. The definition of capacitance, it's the charge per volt. And that means that Q, which is what we don't know, is equal to CV. So Q is going to be equal to the capacitance, which we're told is 400 microfarads. So that's 400 times 10 to the minus 6 times the voltage, which you'll remember was 9 volts. And if you multiply that out, you'll get that that is 3.6 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs. So that's the charge on the capacitor. Question 4. We have a square parallel plate capacitor. The two plates are each 40 centimetres times 40 centimetres. The distance between the plates is 0.8 millimetres. And the dielectric between the plates has a relative permittivity of 1.9. What is the capacitance? Well, here we'll need the formula that C is equal to epsilon naught times epsilon R times A divided by D. And that is going to equal epsilon naught we know is given as 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. Epsilon R we were given, it is 1.9. The area is 40, is 40 centimetres squared, so that's 0.4 metres squared. So that's times 0.4 squared. And that is all going to be divided by the distance between the plates, which is 0.8 millimetres. So that is 8 times 10 to the minus 4 metres. And if you put that all into your calculator, you should get that the capacitance equals 3.3, 3.36 times 10 to the minus 11 farads. That should be an 11 there, times 10 to the minus 11 farads. Question five, we have the following circuit. We have a battery of nine volts. We have a capacitor of 300 microfarads and a resistance of two kilo ohm. We close switch A and therefore the voltage battery will charge the capacitor. When it's fully charged, we open A and we close B so that the capacitor now discharges through the 2 kilo ohm resistance. And we're asked three questions. Firstly, what is the time for the capacitor to fall to 37% of its peak level? Secondly, what is the time for the capacitor to fall to 50% of its peak level? And thirdly, what is the percentage of charge left on the capacitor after one second? Well, we're going to use the formula Q equals Q naught times E to the minus T over RC, where R is this value here and C is the value here and T is the time. Q naught is the maximum charge and Q is the amount of charge that is left after time t. So we can rearrange that formula to say that q divided by q naught 
is equal to e to the minus t over rc and q over q naught now expresses the percentage of the charge left after a certain time. Now the first part of the question has been selected to say what will happen when q over q naught is equal to 0.37, that is 37%, that you should spot that that is equivalent to 1 over e. And that arises when t is equal to rc, because when t equals rc in this formula, then that just becomes e to the minus 1, and e to the minus 1 is 1 over e. So what is t when it equals rc? Well, t equals r, which is, you remember, 2 kilo ohms. So t, two, t is going to be r, which is 2 times 10 cubed times C, which you may remember was 300 microfarads, so that's 300 times 10 to the minus 6. And if you multiply that out, you should get that T equals 600 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds, which of course equals 0.6 of a second. For part 2, we need to know what Q over Q0 is when its value is 50% or 0.5, or we can express it this way, 1 over 2. And that is going to equal e to the minus 1 over, uh, e to the minus t over rc, which is 1 over e to the t over rc. But we know what rc is, we just calculated it, it's 0.6. Now we can turn both equations upside down as it were, and so we get 2 equals e to the t over 0.6. Log to the base e of 2 is equal to 2 to, is equal to t over 0.6. And consequently you'll find that t is equal to 0.414 seconds. So it took 0.6 seconds to fall to 37% of its original charge. It's taken 0.414 seconds to fall to only 50%. Obviously, it takes less time to get to 50% than it does to take to get to 37%. And the third part of the question asks us to identify the percentage of the charge left after one second. Well, once again, we're going to use the same formula, that Q equals Q0, e to the minus t over rc. Oh, there we are, that's better. And now we've got that Q equals q naught e to the minus, well t we've been told is one second. And rc we calculated before, it's 0 0.6. And so now you've got that q over q naught, which is the proportion of the charge remaining, is equal to 1 over e to the 1 over, sorry, e to the 1, sorry, e to the 1.66 because 1 divided by 0 0.6 is 1.66. The minus sign says it's 1 over, so it's 1 over e to the 1 over 0 0.6, which is 1.66. And if you calculate that, you'll get that to 0 0.19, and that means 19% of the original charge on the capacitor is left after one second.